Alright, what's up everyone? This is Hector here, and I wanted to do a little kind of a review and an unboxing on my GeForce GTX 780. I wanted to, you know, have a little FaceTime or whatever, but since I don't have a cameraman, I'm holding the camera and all that, I thought it was best to just show the box and, you know, all this. You won't be able to see my pretty face. Just kidding. Anyways, um... So, for those of you guys who, are, who have been checking out all my videos, all up on YouTube and all that stuff, you'd see I've been into, you know, PC gaming and exchanging all these different parts. I started off with the GeForce GTX 670, and it was 4 gigabytes RAM, that kind of model. It was like a Asus, um, I don't know, one of those newer non-reference cards. And it was really, really good, but I wanted to go, you know, top of the line and get, you know, the best card out there and stuff like that. So, you know, I was looking around and I was thinking of going with either the AMD 7990 or the GTX Titan. And both were pretty much, they're almost the same price back when I was, you know, checking out the different cards. And, of course, now the 7990 is like $700. And the GTX Titan is still around like 1100 or 1200 for the super clocked edition. Well, um, I got the 70, 7990, but I was having way too many issues with it. The whole stutter, frame rate issues. And then sometimes my lock screen wouldn't, you know, unlock, basically. I'd start up Windows 8, and then that lock screen comes up for the password, and I'd click on it, and the password. It wouldn't let me enter the password, and it just freeze. Sometimes it wouldn't, sometimes it would. And on top of that, I didn't even get my eight free games that were supposed to come with a coupon. And I, you know, contacted customer support, and they replied back and s told me to give them the coupon code. I did all that, and they never replied back, so I was like, forget it. Sent it back in, got a refund. Now, I originally wanted to get the GTX Titan... Then everybody was like, no, I'll just get the GTX 780. It's almost as good, and it's a lot cheaper. And I was like, all right, all right, I'll get the GTX 780, but then which one? I decided to go super clocked, or overclocked edition, as you can see right here. And originally, I wanted to get the EVGA one. It looks super sleek, and just a square block and all that. And then the fans are supposed to be super quiet and all that stuff. But of course, it was sold out right when I was about to buy it, and I was running out of time with the AMD 7990. If I didn't turn it in quickly, I wouldn't get a full refund. So I had to turn it in, and then I got this MSI Twin Frozer non-reference GTX 780. Or overclocked edition, as I already said. It's still pretty much the same card, it just has a few different tweaks here and there. So, let me do a little unboxing, kind of. It's already in a box, since I only have one hand to work with. So, I'll just show you. It has 3 gigabytes GDDR5 RAM, PCIe 3.0 compatible, and DirectX 11. And I do have a PCIe 3.0 slot on my motherboard. I have a Sabertooth, um, Sabertooth 990FX for my, you know, AMD CPU. And Gen 3, Revision 2, all that stuff like that. Okay, well, I only have, you know, a camera phone. I need to get a better camera, so I can't exactly focus on here. I'll just kind of read it to you. It says, Twin Frozer Gaming. A graphics card is the single most important element for more FPS frames per second, not first-person shooter. As gamers, we understand that not just any graphics card will do. That's why we bring you the best of the best. We don't want to bug you with noise and heat, but we do want to give you more performance. With MSI Gaming Series graphics cards, you get just that. Now the, the, MSI, graph, the MSI GPU comes with this gaming app. It says Easy Tune, Easy Play. Now on here, on the cover, it says there's a gaming mode, an eco mode, and a default mode. It's just this little app, as you see right here, you click the app, this thing pops up, and then you can click one of the three buttons for those different modes. But, on my gaming app, I guess it's an updated version or whatever, there's an overclock mode, a gaming mode, and a silent fan mode. I think it's just silent mode. 
Um, the the core clock on this, I think it's around, um, you know, somewhere around the 1000 megahertz mark. But when I click gaming mode, it goes to 1045. And when I click overclock mode, it goes to like 1095, 1090, something like that. And so that's pretty much the clock speed. And then we have, oh, of course, the memory bus, 384 bits. Windows 8 compatible. And it says advanced thermal design, cooler and, qu cooler and quieter. MSI's Twin Frozer has been the industry-defining graphics card cooler. The first Twin Frozer kicked off the dual fan trend, and today's MSI, oh, and today MSI stays true to its dual fan, dual slot design, where others have to resort to less effective means. For instance, triple slot cooling. Sure, you know a lot of a lot of GPUs have du double and triple fans now, and still s stick with um dual slot designs. Now it says the GPU temperature for the MSI GTX 780 in gaming mode is 67 degrees Celsius. And this is, you know, under full load, not just on, not just, you know, do the gaming app and click gaming mode and it goes up 67. This is when it's actually processing all the stuff. And the noise level in decibels is 25.7 on the default mode. I'm sure it gets a little louder when it's on the gaming mode. And we have military class 4, top quality and stability. One of the deciding factors in performance is the quality of the components used. That is why MSI only uses MIL STD 810G certified components for its gaming cards because only these components have proven to be able to withstand the torturous circumstances of extreme gaming and overclocking. Rare metal, incredibly stable, or incredible stable. Doesn't really make sense. Incredible stable. Why don't you say incredibly stable? Anyways, extremely high conductivity, stabilized GPU power, better overclocking, ultra long lifetime, extreme low ESR, low temperature, higher higher efficiency. And it says in gaming, it lasts seven hundred and thirty two thousand four hundred and fifty five hours, which is about seventy seventy two years at seventy five degrees Celsius. And eighteen years as wait a minute at seventeen degrees or seventy five degrees Celsius. I don't understand this. What does this mean? There's two there's two you know graphs but it has the same temperature and stuff. There's not there's nothing to you know differentiate the two, man. Anyways Experience Predator, share for fun, a built-in screen a video capturing tool named Predator, which captures your screen as still images or videos with the push of a button, and allows you to capture and record your coolest, goofiest, and most awesome gaming mo moments on your PC. I, don't, I haven't tried this Predator thingy yet, but I have tried the MSI Afterburner. That's also another program that you can download from MSI, and it allows you to, to tweak the... Um, the electrical settings and all that and you can also do screen captures and video you know recording and I tried the screen capture it um it worked once I you know open up the gaming program you know the game whatever you want to call it I open it up did the afterburner click the afterburner button and it did a screenshot and then I went back to windows to see if it captured the screenshot and it did so I went back to the gaming app, pressed the same button that I'm supposed to to take a screenshot, and it didn't take any more screenshots. I guess you have to stay on the gaming program, and you can't switch off, or the afterburner stops doing the screen captures. I don't know. Anyways, features 3072 megabytes GDDR5 memory, NVIDIA TXAA technology, GPU Boost 2.0, PhysX technology, FXAA technology, adaptive vertical sync, NVIDIA surround, supports for four concurrent displays including two dual link DVI, HDMI, and display port 1.2, Microsoft DirectX 11.1 .1 API, feature level 11, bottom dash the zero, underscore, that's what I was thinking of, NVIDIA 3D vision ready, 
NVIDIA SLI Ready Technology, NVIDIA CUDA Technology, PCIe, X, PCI Express 3.0 Support, OpenGL 4.3 Support, OpenCL Support, NVIDIA Shield Ready. Minimum System Requirements PCI Express Compliant Motherboard with one dual width six, times 16 graphics slot, one 8-pin and one 6-pin PCI Express Supplementary Power Connector, Minimum 600 watt or greater system power supply with a minimum 12 volt current rating of 42A. And inside the box is this other box with the cool gamers series or gaming series MSI logo. And this is of course is the thing that includes the little accessories. Oh, dang it, I can't do it one handed. Here we have 6 pin female to 8 pin male power connector and then these connectors to a 6 pin power connector right there <clears throat> and a female VGA to male DVI um, adapter. I actually had one of these, I had to buy one separately when I had the GTX 670 because I do a separate screen sometimes when I'm gaming on the TV. I use a separate screen to do, you know, guides and all that stuff like that. But for some reason, my GTX 780 wasn't reading my second screen through the VGA adapter. And I could have sworn it worked before, and I know it worked on my other GPUs. But I don't know, I have to look into that. And this is the MSI Gaming App version 2. Yeah, see, it's version 2, and it has the new buttons, but the box has the old buttons. And then we have the MSI Quick User Guide, and of course the drivers, but you should just go to NVIDIA and do your own drivers yourself. Get the latest drivers. And stuff all that back in there. And in here would usually be the card, you know, with static bag and all that, but I already got it over here and this is the big bad boy the twin frozen fans and this is just you know plastic it's nothing special you can see it's pretty thin and it's got all those big old heat pipes and over here got the dual link DVI HDMI and the, the display port can't exactly focus. And up here, six pin and eight pin power connector, as I mentioned earlier. And then you see this big old heat pipe and the big fans, they actually extend over the you know the aluminum fins. And that's you know kind of why I wanted the EVGA, because it was just straight with the fins and just a straight block with this one this is a big monster you know and I have a side case fan and it actually presses up right against this and I'm a little afraid that it's gonna break this car down here but so far so good see from the top of the card down to the bottom well, to the bottom of the actual card it's four and a half inches and then another half an inch for you know the card right here and then lengthwise from one end to the other. Well, let's do it to the longest end. Just to be safe for you people with smaller PCs. It is about ten and a half inches. So yeah, you might want to check your cases in case you want to buy this sucker. That's pretty much, you know, all I have to show you. But I have a little bit more to say. When I was um, picking all these graphics cards, people were all saying, you know, if you're just going to do 1080p gaming, you don't really even need a GTX 780. You can probably stick with a 600 series or just get a 770. I've tried this GTX 780 on several games, and it does max out a lot of games, but it cannot max out some of the higher end games like Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light. And so some people would kind of consider those almost next-gen games, at least Metro Last Light, not 
really Metro 2033, and I wanted to get a car to pre prepare for the next-gen games. And Battlefield 4 just came out with their PC requirements, or specifications and all that stuff like that. And they were saying the recommended graphics processor is 3, three gigabytes of RAM. And, but it says you can still stick with the 600 series and all that. And I was um, working on Splinter Cell Blacklist recently, and it did do all the settings on Ultra. Because, you know, I did use GeForce Experience at first to do the optimizer tool, but then I was tinkering around, you know, all myself to see how much it can max out. And that's what I was doing on Metro Last Light, and I tried to p boost up the anti-aliasing, and the frame rate just plummeted. And, um... But like I was saying, I was doing Splinter Cell Blacklist. I was working on a guide for IGN. And it everything did max out at Ultra Settings. And then the anti-aliasing was TXAA times 4. And it kept 60 frames per second for the most part. But there were a few levels that would drop down to 45. So, you know, there's always discrep discrepancies. And, you know, there's all these mix and match on your parts, you know, you might have a different CPU from all these different benchmarks, and then plus the RAM and all that, you know. There's different parts of levels work differently on your GPU than other parts, you know. But, you know, that's pretty much it. I kind of wanted to get a Titan to, you know, be fully prepared for the next generation of gaming. But, you know, also AMD is saying that they might be coming out with something at the end of this month, so we'll have to see what's going on. That's pretty much all I got to say about this. So, you know, if you like this video, give me a little like. You know, subscribe for more tech stuff. And I'm, I will bring you more information if I buy more stuff or if I get more games and all that stuff. And Battlefield 4, the beta's coming out soon. And since it's a public beta, I don't think there's going to be any NDA. So maybe I'll put some gameplay up here up on YouTube and see what's going on. Yep, that's it. And also check me out on my personal blog, HectorMagical.com. I'll put a link in the description because you guys probably can't spell it. Yeah.